Hello and welcome to This Week in Cars. We go over the LA Auto Show, the government, if it gets its way, you'll never talk on a cell phone again and your car. And Crystal's favorite car is the F-Cell, coming right up. <laughs> Welcome to uh, another episode of This Week in Cars. We have shortened the show this week to just 30 minutes, so we're not going to waste any time and get right to it. It's been a big week. Uh, we had the LA Auto Show last week, and first, we're going to tell you what our favorites were, starting with Crystal's. All righty. Uh, hi, I'm Crystal Stranger, and uh, thank you for tuning in this week to This Week in Cars. Uh, my favorite from the LA Auto Show, or one of them, was I got to test drive the hydrogen fuel cell car, the Mercedes B-Class fuel cell. And uh, it's pretty exciting. They're going to have 70 of these cars available for lease uh, in uh, 2012. And it'll just be rentals just in the urban areas, in California, like Southern California, possibly Northern California. And now we have, we have video of this, so can we see the video of the yeah, cell? Yeah, there we go. And no. uh, it's, uh, let's see, it's the first fuel cell-powered electric car that's been produced uh, in the USA. So, the first okay. one in the USA? Yeah, it's, it's going to be the first one that's available to the consumer public. Okay. Yeah. Well, and to 70 people in the consumer public? Yes, to 70 people. Well, it's a hydrogen <laughs> car. There isn't a network for hydrogen vehicles right. yet. So. And what, and what did you like about it? Anything in particular? I, I liked it. it. It felt like it had power to it. It drove smooth. It just felt like a regular car mm -hmm. you could get in and just drive mm -hmm. and not really think about it. And yet I think it gets like 52 miles per gallon is what they're figuring. And per gallon of hydrogen. Yeah, well, I mean, right. equivalent. Right. equivalent. And yeah, I think it is, yeah. And then uh, it only takes three minutes to recharge it. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So it's a little more practical in some ways than plug-in electrics. You have to replug all day. Uh, well, that's the FCL. My favorite was the fact that concept cars are back. So, you know, for yes. the past couple of years, there has been there's been this focus on, you know, what's going to come to market. And this year, we really saw cars that aren't going to come to market, specifically made just for the auto show circuit. Yeah. Uh, we have a couple of pictures of some, like the the Nissan Allure. Uh, this is a symbol of Nissan's coming to sedan design language um, by the guy who did the Juke yeah. uh, video. That I can we see a lot of similarities so to the Juke with the headlights. Uh, exactly. Um, uh, this is the Subaru Impreza concept, which uh, doesn't look anything like the Impreza actually on the road, but could be uh, a symbol of sim uh, Subaru getting its design language together. Yeah. And then uh, this is the Mazda Shinari, which was actually introduced at the Paris show, but uh, another introduction of Mazda's coming to the design language and what they're going to do with their cars. And yeah, I just dug that, hey, here we have cars we can dream about now yeah. that we're never going to see where people just went crazy and the automakers had the money to spend doing that, which yeah. I was like, way to go. Yeah. Um, but, so there are four other notable cars we want to tell you about. Uh, one is the Saab 94X, yeah. which we have here. Um, uh, this is Saab's, up. Oh, that's the Shinari. Again, there oh. we go. Um, so this is Saab's return to the SUV market. It expands their line, makes it uh, as big as it's ever been with three cars. Uh, the last SUV they had, the 97X, no one liked because it was essentially an ancient GM uh, with a Saab badge. This one was engineered with GM and Saab. Saab is going to send uh, a worker to the plant in Mexico to watch it being produced just to make sure they get it right and so far, everyone loves it. Well, I didn't realize this is being produced in Mexico. I'm GM is that, oh, that's right. Yeah, GM wow. is actually building it in Mexico wow. since oh. it was. This was a car GM made, then had to sell the company. So now I never would have guessed that from being at their booth with the uh, white trees and moose walking around the, in the background. <laughs> exactly. The, the lovely Scandinavian design. It was quite a quite a pretty place there. But um, moving on, let's see. We have the Cadillac Urban Luxury Concept is the next one that we found very interesting at the show. It's a small car, uh, just uh, just under 13 feet long, a little longer than a Smart. It is made out of really high-end materials and Cadillac styling in a small package. It's got a 1.0 liter turbo three-cylinder engine with electric assist and dual clutch transmission. The estimated fuel economy on this one will be 56 miles per gallon in the city and 65 on the highway. I, th I think it's pretty exciting. This one is cooler to me than most of what I've seen on these you know, new small yeah. cars. No, I think, I think that's great as well. And the, another concept car, they're never going to build it, so they say, but like a school yeah. Cadillac is playing around. I mean, it's, you know, 
a, a smart car, essentially, but just a bit bigger. And but you never know. Who would have thought Aston Martin would be jumping on the small, small car well, bandwagon either? Yeah, you know what'll happen. there is that. I get flashbacks of <laughs> PTSD when we mention that. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, another notable is the Kia Optima Hybrid, which we have, oh, sorry, the Honda Fit EV, rather. Uh, we have a picture of that as well. This car is going to come out in, in 2009, distracted oh, driving. Hey, there's Ray LaHood. Um, uh, that's what you should be looking at. Uh, this car is going to come out in 2012. Um, this was the EV that Honda said they're going to bring to the show. Um, what I dig about it is that now we're getting electric vehicles that aren't their own standalone entities, but yeah. regular cars being electrified. And yeah. so we've got the Honda Fit EV that's going to come at the same time as the uh, 2012 Ford Focus, two select markets. Um, and you know, Honda says this will have about the same power as a two-liter engine, which in a fit is pretty sporty. Yeah. Um, and it's nice that there'll be an EV with, uh, with that going on. Um, and then there is the Kia Optima Hybrid. We don't have a photo oh, yeah. of that, but it gets a 2.4-liter direct-injected engine from the Sonata. Um, it goes on sale also in 2011, so next year. Um, 40 miles per gallon, same as the smaller cars in the Hyundai line, but it beats the uh, Ford Focus uh, Fusion Hybrid and the Camry Hybrid. So Kia, again, should do well with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Kia seems to be keeping hanging <laughs> on and uh, putting new cars out there. They're doing their thing. Honestly doing that. And uh, we have pricing on a lot of these new cars now, which is very exciting. Uh, the Fiat 500s have been priced. That's an exciting one coming to the U.S. here. It's uh, be interesting to see how that does if people decide they like Fiat again now or if they remember the old ones that were horrible. Well, now, would you go for, for this one? And we have a picture of this, um, one of its trims uh, on the show floor. Yeah, I actually, I actually kind of like it, to be honest. Uh, I, there we go. Of course, <laughs> of course, right? Um, but anyway, this one uh, starts at 15500 for the base model, and then it goes up to 17500 for the sport model. And the most expensive trim of it, the lounge, will be at 19500 That puts it right above around um, Ford Fiesta, actually, with uh, Ford Fiesta starts at about fourteen grand. This is a smaller car, but a yeah. cuter car, going for sort of the mini thing with a small car, premium options, premium pricing. Yeah. You know, I, I think somebody tried to kit one out, and they spent like twenty five grand. On the online configurator. I saw that. They, on the online con configurator, yeah. getting all the bells and whistles for it, yeah. trying to make it the most souped-up version of it exactly. they could find. And that's not a little bit yeah. of money for a tiny car. No, it's but, not. But. Um, but they should do well because Crystal likes it, and that means everyone is going to like it. That's um, not always true. The, I, I have my own taste. The, so uh, listen to me. <laughs> Kia Optima, not the hybrid version, but the regular Optima, uh, was also priced. We have a picture of that as well. Um, Again, part of the Kia onslaught, uh, the Kia and Hyundai onslaught over the past year of cars coming out. There are uh, three trim levels. It starts off at eighteen eight ninety five, or sorry, eighteen nine ninety five, and goes up to twenty five nine ninety five for the SX model. And then we have the Elantra as well, which uh, wait, that was the Elantra you were just covering. No, the Hyundai Elantra is the next one. It starts at fifteen thousand five hundred and fifty. It's about fifteen hundred cheaper than the Cruze or the Focus. And it'll get around 40 mile per gallon for the entire line. The Elantra Limited, which is the souped up version of it, starts at 19,980. So Hyundai's right there in the pack with everyone uh, trying to fight it out for the best small car. And then two big entries from Nissan are the Cross Cab, which got a price uh, which I call the Cross Beast still. This is it with its top up. It is the Murano, uh, but convertible. And it starts at 47. Uh, what, 47190 And then we have the Nissan GTR, which was stuck off in a corner of the floor for the concept cars, and it's finally crossed the $90,000 barrier, um, coming in at 90950 That's like five grand more than it was when it came out yeah. just two years ago. Um, so we're going to keep going with this because we are running well into the show, and we have a lot more to tell you. So the GMIPO happened last week. GM is now a public company. The government reduced, reduced its stake from about 60% to 30%, more than they said they were going to sell. Um, GM made about $23 billion. Uh, SAIC, the Chinese firm, bought 1% of it. Um, they, the government made $3.4 billion. 
I'm um, sorry, the UAW made $3.4 billion. The government still has about 30% left, and if they're going to break even, they've got to get the stock up to about 50 bucks per share. Now it's trading today at around 35 So there's a chance of it, but it's going to take a few years. But it's just good that GM is now back on listed on the market and the government will be out. It, so. it is exciting, and uh, it, it's exciting to see that they're surviving and thriving and that the market and the public are believing so well in this company again. Yeah. I mean, they're, you know, they have the same... Ford did it the hard way, uh, borrowed all this money, mortgaged everything, even the logo, and now GM has about the same, a bigger market cap, like $63 billion than Ford, which is about 48. So, you know, not quite fair, but yeah. uh, eventually well, now, we'll now see that, what... Now that they're out from under the shadow of debt that was haunting <laughs> exactly. them, they should be able to really uh, succeed and thrive. We right will, now. with the cars they're coming out with, there's a good shot of that. And they have been coming out with some good cars. I, I agree. GM's, GM's doing good this year. So. Who's not doing good is Ray LaHood. Oh, yes. Uh, Ray LaHood, uh, the bane of our existence. He has decided now to jam all cell phones and cars, or try to, try to make devices installed in all new vehicles that will stop you and even a passenger in your vehicle from using your cell phone. So they started a, a campaign, uh, Faces of Distracted Driving, yeah. and we have a, a video that they made uh, to intro that campaign. Can we, uh, play in 2009, distracted driving killed nearly 5,500 people and injured a half a million more. But statistics never tell the whole story. Behind these numbers are children, parents, neighbors, and friends, their families torn apart by senseless preventable crashes. Our Faces of Distracted Driving web series will share the stories of these people whose lives have been forever changed because of texting or talking behind the wheel. And they will all tell you the same thing. No message or call is worth the risk. So when you get in your car, buckle up and put your cell phone in the glove compartment. So, uh, you know, I think it's interesting that he wants to, he is this determined, even though you know, people have said, we don't know yet that cell phones are the cause of this. And like... Uh, well, they, 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 well, there were some reports that had come out, I think, where they had found that since the, uh, they had put the hands-free law in, that the rates of accidents had actually gone down right. compared to before cell phones even were out. You know? Yeah, I think he, he is determined to do this. This is his crusade. And, you know, he said, I think it'll happen, which is the, he's going to look at the t technology. But I feel like, you know, there's no way this is going to go through with all the stakeholders in this cars, you know, Verizon, AT&T, electronics companies. He's, he's determined, though. I mean, he says, yes, this absolutely will come through. I mean, he's almost like a Nazi about this. He's really, week after week, coming out with these very intense campaigns against it. It's kind of frightening. Yeah. Um, he's a scary man. <laughs> and there's the face of your anti-cell phone man. You just saw him, Ray LaHood. Uh, but speaking of campaigns, the next segment of the show is called Car Campaigns. Car makers spend a fortune trying to get you to pay attention, and the problem is you don't. So we give them a bit of space, a bit of room to stretch their arms out and say a few words about what they're doing. This week we're going we're to look at Dodge, uh, which has revamped its entire lineup over the past few weeks. Um, and the interiors really are the big deal. So Ralph Gillies, who is the uh, Chrysler Design Chief and head of the Dodge brand, spoke at the LA Auto Show and spent 25 minutes talking about what they're doing to improve the cars. Uh, we took some excerpts and we have a video here we can play for you. Lamps cleaned up the fascia. But really, the story is about the interior. And you're going to hear this theme over and over again with our 2011 products. The interior is all new for 2011. We literally scraped up the lamps, cleaned up the fascia. But really, the story is about the interior. And you're going to hear this theme over and over again with our 2011 products. The interior is all new for 2011. We literally scraped out what was there, listened to our customers, listed one after another what the things we had to fix, and we did it. A super soft instrument panel, driver-oriented focused uh, gauges, a brand new three-spoke multifunction steering wheel, super soft armrest, and it goes on and on. On top of that, we banish what we used to call in the office rat fur gray. You know, you ever seen that gray color? We'll no longer make that color, it just won't exist. So we're looking at reds now, tans, colors with high chroma. A very exciting vehicle to be in and drive. And on, the performance of the car has been augmented as well. We always had a decent four-cylinder engine, but it was mated to a very old tech four, four-speed transmission. So we're mating our world engine, made in Dundee, Dundee, Michigan, with our new six-speed transmission. The combination really wakes up the vehicle,
given very competitive fuel economy at 20 miles per gallon, city 31 highway, and, do, and brings the fun back. The car really accelerates well. Mango really benefits from some great bones. Obviously, it's built on the Grand Cherokee. It's been lengthened 10 inches, uh, 5 inches in wheelbase, and 6 inches overhang for really easy access to the third row. But what's going to make this thing remarkable on the road are its proportions. It's really uh, benefiting from a phenomenal rear drive proportion, which gives you short front overhangs, a nice uh, substantial hood, and awesome proportions. It looks great going down the road. It's about two inches less tall than the old Durango, a little shorter, a little less. Now, I mean, I, I listen to him, and I think, you know, there are a few things in there. One, I think their designs they've come out with are actually pretty good looking. Yeah. Uh, the new Charger, um, you know, the Challenger, they didn't do much to, but it looks good. I think the Durango is gorgeous. Um, the Journey, I know you weren't impressed with <laughs> when they rolled it out. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't impressed with it when they rolled it out. <laughs> but, the, but, I mean, the rest of what they're doing, yeah. what did you, you know, the eliminating rat fur gray, which I think is fantastic to get rid of that. Yeah, they've um, had that for a long time. And they're, they're trying, they're trying. They just but seem you're not, really you're not sold. afraid right now. I don't know, you know, I mean, I, I watched part of, the, part of the, the first part of the speech, which isn't what you showed when I was at the auto show, and... He just seemed scared of the future for the company, which I didn't like seeing being a longtime Mopar girl. That broke my heart. I just I couldn't even watch the rest of it. <laughs> now, did he, what, did he seem scared in terms of just you know, nervous about where they'd come from? And, you know, he spent a lot of time saying, I didn't even think we'd be here. Like, if you'd asked me a year ago, I'd be, and I'd be at the show introducing these cars, I wouldn't have believed you. Do you think it was just that, or do you think he really... Because, I mean, he sounded pretty confident, you know, toward the end that, hey, now we've got the cars... But you didn't. You didn't get that feeling. I, I didn't get that feeling when I was watching it from. So what about the, the metal it. itself? Did that make you feel like, hey, these are cars that now can start to stand up? I still and think there are Dodge ways design. behind even Ford and Chevy on the innovations and stuff that's coming out right now. It's, are they? But but is better than what was? And I'm just asking. It's, if, it's better than what was. And me being, you know, the hardcore longtime Mopar girl, I don't want to have to say. <laughs> but, you know, right. right now they don't have anything I'd buy. Really? Yeah. Not even a Challenger? No, maybe the Fiat. That's kind of supporting Mopar, you know? <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Okay. Sad. It's, so it's very got, sad to they, me. they are still stuck in the mines. <laughs> to you. To me, they are. Yes. Chilean miners now quite rescued. Yes, All right. Well it, then, but um, Mr. I, Gillies, I, you're on the way. We, we've got that far, <laughs> but a bit more to go. Um, that's car campaigns for this week. So next up, we don't want to leave out though Lamborghini from the LA Auto Show. They introduce these specs on their brand new engine. Lamborghini is my favorite car in the entire world. Uh, Could not let go. that story. Yeah, yeah. It's got, you um, uh, it. I was going to let it go, but they decided you had to have it. So they just brought out their new V12 engine, uh, 6.5 liters, the same size as the previous engine they had in the Murcielago, but they don't share any components. But instead of me talking about it, how about we just watch the video, uh, the Lamborghini released. Yay. Five with the V12. That's it revving on the stand. It is lighter. It gets better gas mileage. It has a higher RPM, 8,500 instead of 8,250. Um, and it'll get the car to 217 miles an hour whenever the Murcielago successor is let go. So That's sexy. That's oh, very sexy, yeah, of course. It's awesome. Yes. Um, it'll probably be called the LP700 and look out for it uh, at Lamborghini Dealers near you and get your checkbooks ready. Next up, we have racing. So, uh, quite a few developments, actually, on the racing scene, uh, surprisingly, for a big yeah. week of the auto show. Uh, Lotus is going to be joining the IndyCar circus as well. Chevy announced last week that they were going to enter. Now, Lotus, Chevy announced, sorry, two weeks ago they were going to enter. Um, now, Lotus has. And we have a picture of the livery they say they're going to use in IndyCar. Uh, this is with the uh, Kalkoven IndyCar team. Yellow and green, just like in the old days. Uh, we don't know anything about their engine yet, except that it will be 2.4 liters um, by IndyCar spec. Uh, it could be turbocharged. 
or not, it'll have between 500 and 700 horsepower, uh, and we'll be seeing it in 2012. That will make Chevy, Honda, and Lotus in the game in IndyCar. Um, green and yellow for IndyCar, but in F1, on a side note, they announced they'll be going back to the John Player Special livery. That's the black and gold from the 70s that Emerson Fittipaldi won his championship with. Ayrton Senna drove um, seven drivers' championships, actually, Lotus won, and it was with this, uh, this color car. So... That's Lotus for the, uh, for the weekend racing. And Exciting. Uh, next up, we have uh, AMG and Ducati are teaming up together to uh, sponsor Ducati's MotoGP team that now has both Valentino Rossi and Nikki Hayden on board. Very exciting team right there. Looking forward to what they're going to be doing next year. And there's a lot of rumors about that AMG might actually buy Ducati within a couple of years' time. I mean, it's a, it's a bit of a funky... You know, get together. So this is this is Nikki Hayden. Uh, yeah. He's just written out on that new Ducati. Ducati, I think Diavolo is what they're going mm -hmm. to call it. Uh, did a big burnout. Came out with a helmet. He's talking to two AMG representatives. Um, but it's a bit of a strange tie-up to have Mercedes, you know, tuning division buy into MotoGP. Uh, there are rumors that yeah, they're going to buy Ducati, uh, but yes and no. I mean, it's good. It's good marketing for them. Like kind of that cross-marketing platform because. Ducati's really big in the U.S. and in the types of demographics and market that I think Mercedes would like to continue to expand into. So it's, 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 the image. Right. it's the image. And now, you know, what would, I would guess, what, Fiat, so the Yamaha team, Fiat Yamaha, they sponsored, yeah. but they don't, is there any partnership? Like, they don't own any part of Yamaha, do they? Do you know? I don't think so. I don't know, though. That'd be something to look up. Okay. Well, whatever AMG and Ducati have in mind should be uh, fast and sound very good. But I'm looking forward to seeing if what Nikki can do with Valentino next year. Nikki oh, got yeah. one championship with Honda. What two years ago? Uh, it was like three, three years ago. Three yeah, four years ago, something like that. Um, yeah, yeah. So you need to see what what they can do together. Um, yeah. Next up, the GT Academy. So GT5 comes out in two days, just two more days. The long awaited GT5, almost the Duke Nukem of video games, uh, of driving games, comes out. And uh, the GT Academy is what you can register for as of next month. And that means that what you'll do is, uh, we have a picture of what you would actually be doing. You'll race online uh, on the PlayStation Network. And then, assuming you win and win and win and win and win, you'll be called in next March to race uh, at a central location with the best American racers, and if you win that, then you'll, be, you'll represent the U.S. in the GT Academy, which places uh, online racers and actual Nissans to race in, in a national competition. Whoever wins that gets the chance to race with professional drivers. I think they're uh, giving you a, a slot team. on a professional team. Like It's actually saying they're going to give yeah. you a, a fully sponsored racing sp Racing slot. That's exactly. pretty amazing. I, From playing a video game. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, art, life, that whole thing again. Yeah. But if they, you know, they've done this for a couple of years now. I mean, and the drivers are, you know, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, there was a thing not too long ago where a driver, uh, a driver, with some online drivers took on some magazine drivers and they actually beat them. Wow. Um, so GT Academy coming December 1st is when you can sign up. And then last up is uh, Reese Millen. The Reese Millen Hyundai and Red Bull team uh, are doing a time attack run in Brazil, and we have a video clip of what they're going to be doing. In case you're wondering, Crystal taught him everything he knows because she <laughs> drives just like that. Um, uh, and that's actually a great intro to our strap-in segment. Um, strap-in is where we look at the future of cars, not what's going to happen tomorrow or next year, but 5, 10, even 50 years down the line. This week, we're looking at seat adjustments, of all things. So at the LA Auto Show, a French um, car supplier called Faricia, yeah. they 
came out with a, a um, an app. Yeah, it's like an, as an iPhone app yeah. that you can you can use it on your iPhone and be adjusting your seat and you buy like all these different types of custom fits for your seat and it measures your body like you take a picture of you from one side and all this stuff it's kind of crazy you plug in the you plug in your gender uh your weight um uh, your height and then you actually spin um uh, to get an accelerometer an accelerometer reading to find out yeah how how long your arms are (laughs) you send all your info to the aphoresia database and they will send the info to the the app which will then configure your seat over the Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth network. So we have a video of that as well, uh, just to show you how to work. Let's have a look. So uh, that's the future of seating. And what they were saying was that you you might not even know the best way to sit in your car. There's a guy who tried it, and he said that you know it, it wasn't exactly comfortable for him. And the Farisi rep told him, well, you might have learned some bad habits about how yeah. to sit. So give it a try for a week. But just that now... You know, a new a new take on technology in yeah. the car. Not well, sort of I, know, I know, I know, they have like additional apps within their little system where you can choose to uh, to like get sports performance ones, like a racing posture. And right. They have ones like for if your back hurts to give you a different posture. Right. And, yeah. The health yeah. benefits, I suppose, as well. Uh, uh, but that's the completely custom customizable car it's like via orth- orthopedic iPhone. shoes for your uh, <laughs> yeah, orthopedic for your shoes. Car. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's your future, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I, now, finally, we don't have much time left, so we're going to get to a segment called Junk in the Trunk, where we just run through all the news that wasn't quite news enough, but we still want you to know about. Um, uh, first up, the New York City taxi. They are looking for a new taxi. They have three finalists, so no more Crown Vicks in a little while. It's going to be either. We have photos of this one, which is a Nissan NV200 van. Or this one, which is a Ford Transit van. The idea of sitting in a van doesn't... Uh, ple- uh, They're all vans. Um, or this one, which is a, uh, a little car with a, yeah. a yeah, from Turkey. Um, it's actually not based on any other car. And the, the Ford is made in Turkey, too. The, uh, that's right. The Ford is made in Turkey. Made in Turkey shipped yeah. here. Um, that's a Turkish car, lots of windows. <laughs> so look out for yellow vans next time you're in New York. Um, they're not ready yet, but it's a taxi of tomorrow if you want to check them out and register your interest. Yeah, you, you can actually vote on them online, even if you don't live in New York City. So if you want to go on there and piss off all the New Yorkers, go vote for what you think is the ugliest. <laughs> hey, tourists have rights too. That's what I say. <laughs> um, uh, next up, Cars. The second installment of the Pixar film comes out next summer. The second trailer has been released, and here it is. In 2006, two unlikely friends became the heroes of Radiator Springs. But on their next big road trip, they're not only racing across the world. Wish me luck. You go get them, buddy. Welcome to the inaugural running of the World Grand Prix. They're racing to save the world. No one can stop us. Finn Mac Missile, British intelligence. So mighty, average intelligence. <laughs> Welcome to Tokyo International Airport. Listen, this isn't Radiator Springs. These Americans are clearly master spies. Oh, you've got to be joking. Go, McQueen! Informator. I'm on approach. Roger that. There he is. He's getting away! Hang on! Cars 2. Good job! Sorry, ladies. 
<laughs> wow. That's, I, I that's all that. I can say. It's, it's, like, it's like a James Bond movie it, about cars. It is, it's wow, so a cartoon Bond film of cars by cars. Um, and then last up are three contests, things you can win. Uh, the first one is Ford Mustang on their Ford Mustang Facebook, which is facebook.com slash Ford Mustang. If you win the, uh, sorry, if you they're looking for a name for the new uh, V6 performance package. They're submitting names now, one name per entrant. If you win, you get a two-year lease on a Ford Mustang V6 with the performance package. Uh, the second one is Range Rover USA is having a contest to go to a golf event in Naples, Florida. Uh, tweet at Range Rover USA. Let them know what your favorite drive is on the fairway or down the road in 140 characters or less, and you can win the trip uh, to the golf tournament um, next month. And then finally, the Green Lantern. This movie's coming out next month. Uh, you get a chance to win the Chrysler Imperial that Green Lantern drives. We have a picture of that right here. Hardee's and Carl's Jr., you need to drink up, drink up, drink up, and uh, you get a chance to win that car. So we're going to wrap this up now. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the show. Two final house cleaning things. One, tweet us your favorite taxi at TWICars.com. Oh, sorry, at TWICars. That's just it. At TWICars. Let us know which taxi you would like. Um, I'm at JRR at thisweekend.com. If you have any comments or stuff you'd like us to cover next week, Crystal's at... Oh, I'm at uh, Crystal at TWICars.com, right? Is that the, the one? I, um, I so. No, This Weekend. Sorry. Crystal so, at This Weekend. This weekend. JRR at ThisWeekend.com. Oh, Don't we go. even know my email yeah. address. JRR <laughs> and Crystal at ThisWeekend.com. Um, and then lastly, uh. Storm on Demand has made this all possible. They handle our uh, cloud computing for the whole network this weekend and for our show. So if you ever need cloud computing, stormondemand.com. That's our show. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week.